Hi everybody, Don Smith here. Today it's my pleasure to give you a sneak peek of the new On One Perfect Photo 10 software. Um, I know a lot of you work in previous versions of On One. I, I was been working for quite a while in version 9.5 and then the good folks at On One sent me a beta version and actually gave me the go ahead to start showing you what the new version can do and how it will fit in my workflow. Um, so I'm going to show you a picture that I captured last week uh, atop Conway Summit that's located about 10 miles north of Mono Lake area, the Lee Vining area on the eastern side of the Sierra in California, just off of Highway 395 for those of you that happen to be familiar with that area. And as you can see, the aspens were just starting to turn color up there. We were getting some beautiful oranges and yellows, but still some green. So it looked really fresh kind of the way I like shooting fall color. Um, I'm just working a quick work through on Lightroom, which I'm not going to show you here today. I just, uh, I, I've showed you this in other videos, but I was able to take this image. And by the way, before I open up into Photoshop, let me just give you the, what I used to capture this, which was a Sony a7R II, uh, the new Sony, it's a fantastic camera and also the new Sigma 150 to 600 sports lens. It's a uh, brute, but it's a great lens, very sharp all the way throughout the range. Uh, great landscape lens, to, and you, it folds down. You can put it in your bag and carry it around. But uh, you're looking at this image in Lightroom, the raw file, and for those of you not used to working in raw, you might be saying, gee, Don, you, you've got all this new equipment, but it's producing a terrible picture. No, it, it's just that raw files need processing. So. A lot of times when I post up on social media, I will tell people how I did it and we'll get the comments, gee, I never use Photoshop, I'm old school, I can do it right in the camera. Well, what you're doing is, is shooting, you're either still shooting film, <laughs> but if you're shooting digital, you're shooting obviously a JPEG and there is processing going on with the camera. In a RAW file, there is some processing going on, but not to the extent of what would go on in the camera. So let's go ahead with a few quick tweaks I could bring this image up to this. That's just through Lightroom. I haven't even begun to do anything else. And a lot of you would say, well, gee, that's that looking really good. But before I would send this off to my photo agency, Getty, uh, I think I can get a little bit more out of this file. And I'm going to show you today how I do that strictly in the on one filters. So if you're used to using version 9 or 9.5 or any of the previous versions for that matter, you know in Photoshop you would go to automate and there would be your on one uh, filters. Now in version 10, you just go under the filter menu and there they are down with your other filters. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the effects uh, panel, which is where I do the majority of my work. And for those of you with a sharp eye, you may have noticed that there wasn't a black and white filter in there. And oh my gosh, did on one take away my black and white? Nope, they just added it here in the effects panels. Uh, there's still all your presets, but the cool thing is you're going to be able to work in layers along with any of these other filters that we have in On One. So my first move when I come out of Lightroom is always to go to Dynamic Contrast. And by the way, before we open this, this is the new interface. It looks a little bit different from the older interface. One of the cool things, you come down here to the bot far bottom left, and you can turn these panels on or off. Okay, and we can come down over here. We could turn these panels on or off. Let me turn these guys back on. And now uh, the tool palette has moved over to here. And the other great thing is come all the way over here to the far right. I can now jump into any of the other uh, panels that I would like by simply clicking here. I don't have to um, close out and go back and reopen a new panel. I can just click any of these. I can go into portraiture, which obviously we wouldn't be doing here with a landscape. Um, I could go into enhance. So pretty cool. All right, let's come back up to dynamic contrast. And the, uh, there's some presets as there is with every filter. I just love the natural preset. And there you can see that what um, Really what's going on in dynamic contrast, it's looking for edge contrast and midtone edge contrast, which is really anything outside of the darkest darks and the whitest whites. 
So what I always tell my students in workshops to do with anything, if a filter is worth its weight in gold, it's going to give you an opacity slider. And obviously on one gives you that. So I tell people, let's turn that opacity slider off. And this is what the image looked like when we opened it right out of Lightroom. The reason I tell you to do this is because our um, eye brain tends to accept too much change, I believe, too readily. Uh, it happens with color, it happens with tonality changes, and, and it can happen with um, sharpening. So I tell people turn it off and then bump the change in, <coughs> excuse me, subtly. Turn it off, bump the change back in subtly. So I think right about close to 50% is going to look good for this picture. Okay. Now, um, a new way of adding filters come right up above the box here. Oh, by the way, before I leave this box, let's let's come down into here. I want to show you a few things. Uh, let's bring this image up to 100%. It's kind of going a little too fast with this picture. In the detail panel, as in version 9, you still have your small, medium, and large details. And I think for, for uh, fall color, this small detail finder is really very cool. Um, because we do have a lot of fine detail in fall color. So I tend to blow things up 100% when I'm looking at fine detail. And then I'm going to come back up and I'm going to click Fit. And then I'm going to lower down my large detail. And by the way, on my website, I just wrote a new blog called Frequency Separation. And that's basically what we're doing here. We're separating out the larger digital frequencies from the smaller, more fine, uh, fine edge uh, digital frequencies or digital edges. So right about there looks pretty good. The other thing I want you to follow over to the far left. See that white trunk of that aspen right there? Uh, when we add dynamic contrast, sometimes that white can tend to get a little blown out. So come back in here to your highlight slider and you can tone that down. You can also go back up to 100% and we can simply take this little tool and move it over. So now when this renders, you can see this. There's where we were and you can see the edge start to come down. It's very subtle. But um, I think it's really important to pay attention to that when we're in dynamic contrast. OK, now let's go ahead. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to see if I can bring out a little bit more of the yellows and oranges in this picture. So to add a filter in version 10, we just simply click into this plus sign. And you're going to see something new added here. All the filters that are on your left are now over here on your right. So if I want to come into the color enhancer, which is I, what I want to do, I can just click right there. And my controls open up, OK? Or again, I can come over here to the left to my presets. And I happen to like this fall enhancer. So I'm going to click on that. Now again, the, the colors obviously come in too garish. So I can just turn that off. And again, bump it in subtly. OK, just about in there, just like so I think that's looking good. Usually with fall color, I will take a look at my greens individually. Come over here to the right of fall enhancer. There is a green enhancer, but I just happen to think in this picture that the greens look good. They're not an issue that I need to deal with in this picture, but in certain fall color images I do. So I just want to make you aware of that. OK, another filter I want to make you aware of. Let's click Add Filter. And by the way, you can see that these filters are now closing up below this box on their own layer. And if you want to get back to any of these at any time, just simply double click and they will reopen and you can make the changes. I'm going to blow this picture up again 100%. A lot of times when shooting with big telephoto glass, uh, there tends to be haze in the air and um, it, it can affect the look of our sharpening. So I, again, I'm just finding some sharp edges right in here, which happen to be here with uh, this aspen trunk and here with this aspen trunk. And I'm going to move back out to sharpening. Now, I'm going to get my grid up here. And I'm going to show you two filters I just absolutely love. The first one is Amazing Detail Finder. This is going to work for you about 90% of the time. If it doesn't, simply go next door to its neighbor, High Pass Sharpen. 
But let's take a look at Amazing Detail Finder. What it's going to do is going to look, obviously, for high frequency edges like these trees. Okay, now the thing to avoid with that, let's turn the opacity off again. So we come into the box and we turn it off and we bump it in. And just until we see those trees start to pop right about, well, right about 50%. Uh, you have to be careful with fall color. Let's reduce this down to full color, or excuse me, to full screen. Uh, because, you, again, we want to avoid this giving this picture this, this sort of crunchy look that I call it. If you go over the top with any of these commands, this picture can just look and feel um, too crunchy. It doesn't even look sharp. It goes beyond sharp, and it has this unnatural look. All right. Last filter I want to add very quickly here is I'm going to come down to Vignette. And I'm going to add the big softy. So a great filter. Okay, now when we add that filter, just sort of follow the cursor top right. It tends to come into the picture a little too much. There it tends to come in a little too much. And certainly on the bottom right, it, it comes in a little too much. Well, the first thought would be is take the opacity down. I've been teaching you that throughout this entire lesson, but look what it does to the far edges. It brings them down a little too much too. So I'm going to show you another way in this situation that we can deal with this. I'm going to leave it up at 100%. I'm going to come over here to my toolbar and grab my little masking brush here. Now, by default, it's going to come up to 100%. I like to work subtly again, so let's bring it down right around oh, 30%. And if you tap the right or left bracket key, it will bring the brush up for you. I don't want to get on the edges. I just want to get inside the edges here and lighten things up. So I'm going to lighten there, and I'm going to lighten there. We're doing this all at 30%. So especially this tree needs to be lightened up. As long as I click and hold, it's only taking 30% away. So that would leave 70%. And the mistake I see some people make is they think if I pass it again, I will take another 30% away and then it'll only be 40%. But you got to remember it's going to be 30 of 70, which is we got to multiply it. So it's really going to be 21% on the second pass. And the beauty is you can make as many passes as you want. It's all visual, okay? And if I want to paint back in, I simply hold my option key and I can paint it back in. And really that's the way that I use the big softy and paint out. And when I'm ready to apply, I just go ahead and click my apply button. And what this will do is it will take all of my layers and it will apply it back to Photoshop. So, we have gone, let's go back in the Lightroom, what we started with originally. And again, for those of you saying, I never use Photoshop, I never process images, they come out great looking for my camera. There you go. Okay, so that's kind of a quick look at some of the new features in On One Perfect uh, Photo 10. I'm going to be showing you more as time goes by and time permits. I do have some workshops coming up later this month. I may not be able to get to video recording until I get back from those, but it trust me, it's a great program. By the way, their browser is just um, awesome. I'm hoping to, to create one more on the new browser. If uh, you've had frustration with Lightroom or any other um, photo program, well, let's say like Bridge, Adobe Bridge, Aperture is not even out there anymore. Please take a look at the new browser program. I think you're going to absolutely love it. Very quick uh, image drawing and thumbnail drawing. And we'll show you that in another video. So until next time, uh, this is Don Smith. Please visit my website, www.donsmithphotography.com. Take a look at my workshops and also click on the uh, affiliations link and uh, click Go to the On One link and click on it and pre-order your version. And I'll get a little bit out of it for helping you along with this video. And you'll be one of the first people to get the new software when it's released later this month. So until next time, take care.